Welcome back to Ta-da! 3D Printing. So you guys know that I've been having some crazy stringing on my Prusa XL 5 tool head. After taking a little break, I contacted Prusa Chat to find out what they suggested. After sending them a picture and discussing a little bit of what I had already tried, they suggested lowering the temperature and playing with the retractions. They also sent me a link to 3D Print Dog's video that has the G-code, which I thought was very interesting. So they basically gave me things to try. They did not give me an exact formula. I had also seen a few other people say that temperatures seem to really affect it, so I decided to run a temp tower. I had lowered the temperature just a little bit from 215 to 210 on my prints, but I felt like that was not enough. So I decided to do this temp tower. I didn't want to run it as just a single color or each tool head doing their own because that's not the issue. It's the changing of the colors. So I went through and added all of the G codes in for the temperature change. And my screen record doesn't like showing pop-ups. So this is the code that I would put in at each different temperature change. Of course, this is on 205 that I changed it to 205 but each one of course this next one I'll do 200 on and on then I went back through again and started changing all of the colors so that each temperature would go through all five tool heads so I would have to do a tool change every two millimeters and that was pretty simple because it would already show which one was active so I could just click the next one it took a while to go through all of the layers between doing the g-code for the temperature and then going through and doing the color changes this definitely took me a few minutes also i changed all of my filaments to be overture pla nothing satin just regular boring pla this print started fine and i did check on it multiple times to make sure that it was going through all of the different color changes it looked like it was printing fine but I was not seeing any huge differences in the temperatures helping with the stringing as it was getting a little bit cooler each time until about right here, I started looking and I thought, man, I don't see any difference in these different temperatures and that's odd. So I looked down at the screen and I realized it's still saying 230, even though I'm on 210. Yes, I can go in and change the nozzle temperature down to 205 was what I was at on that layer but as soon as it jumps to the next tool head it jumps back up to 230 again so I spent a little bit of time trying to crank it down to 205 200 and finally I just got distracted and let it finish printing so I really did not get any results out of this temperature tower that I was hoping for so I definitely needed to go a different route with doing temperature changes and color changes on the five tool head, but I wasn't sure what to do for that. So I decided to do a two color benchy. I already had this pre-slice for two colors on the MMU3 for the MK3, and I wanted to compare what the time frame would be. So on the MK3 S Plus with MMU3 to do two colors, it's going to be right around six hours. And if I switch to the XL, it's going to be closer to about two hours. Of course, it is a different nozzle size as well. The lowest I've ever gone on temperatures on any kind of PLA is 200 base on the initial and then to jump to 190. So no one has said specifically what temperatures they're using. They're just saying they went lower. So I'm going to attempt those numbers. I feel like at this point, anything lower than that sounds crazy. So these two colors will be using extruder one and two, which I have set up as white and black, which I think is ideal because it seems like the worst stringing I've been having is amongst black and white. So I feel like if I can nail that down, I shouldn't have as much trouble with some of the other colors. And right off the bat, I am not impressed with this. It is very stringy. And yes, I know that I can burn off the hairs, but the problem that I'm having is these areas where the black actually kind of streaked into the white. So let me clean it up a little bit. It does look better, but I just still feel like it looks too rough for what I really would like it to look like. 
I happened to run a two color bench sheet on my MMU3 and I wanted to compare that a little bit. Of course, they are different nozzles. The XL has a 0.6 nozzle. They're different colors, but the stringing on the MK3, I've had a lot of trouble making that one work, but the one on the right, the pink and the gray, yes, there is a little bit of stringing. You can see a little bit of stringing in the door, but they're so light compared to the XL even after cleaning it up. So I just feel like I'm gonna have to just keep going lower on the temperature. Of course, the MK3 is printing at 205. So I'm already at 190. I'm already quite a bit cooler, but I'm gonna have to just keep going even cooler. So the second Benchy for the XL, I'm going to set at the first layer being 190 and then the other layers being 180 and I'm really hoping it doesn't clog and I mean for multicolor I am happy to finish a print without there being an error or a clog or some kind of issue so I'm not having that as the problem but I'm still getting the stringing and there's still even a couple of spots that seem like there's some black that's been drug into the white outside trim and I cannot pop it off. It's not just something I can brush off. This is how it looks after I've cleaned it up a little bit and it is better, but there's still some spots that I cannot pop off. And along the front, I see this kind of, the white circle did not work out. I didn't really want to jump into messing with retraction. So I was kind of looking on Facebook to see what other people did. The people that had good looking prints had the new alpha firmware and they used input shaper which i've done but the thing i had not done that they did say i saw it multiple times was they were running the alpha 2.7.0 prusa slicer and i was not i am not generally a big fan of jumping into alpha firmware slicers anything i have preset tuned prints that i want to keep running so I usually hesitate. And as far as I had seen in the Alpha 2 firmware update, they didn't require 2.7. They just said you had to have at least 2.6.1, which I had. But whatever, I wanted to try it and see if that was just the missing link in all of this. So I got my same print going at 190, 180, and here is how it turned out still black and white I'm keeping everything as consistent as possible there is some stringing I don't like that they're stringing but I'm not seeing any black smears into the white anywhere I'm not gonna say that this is smooth this looks a little bit rough so maybe I can raise the temperature a little bit now but it seems to me that my missing piece was that I was not using the most up-to-date slicer I was not using 2.7.0 slicer with the alpha 2 firmware that seems to be the biggest thing that made a huge change yes there are still some imperfections on this print but for a small print it's not terrible i would like to see some improvement and continue tinkering with it but i'm finally feeling like this is something that i can dial in just a little bit more it's not out of control like it was in the beginning. So let me know your thoughts. If you think that this print is a huge improvement or do you think that it's still needs a lot more work? Thanks for watching.